Yeah, the the question of a the secondary receiving option for Josh Allen has been, you know, at the front of Bill's Mafia's <laughs> mind for a long oh my time. God. It kind of leads right in if we want to yeah, get it into the Gabe Davis stuff. John Michael had, had said, asked this earlier, uh, do you see Gabe Davis turning it around for the playoffs and really starting to contribute? Or do you think that what we've seen from this year is just what we get from now on? Yeah, um, obviously, I spent a lot of time talking about this uh, this week, especially, but for majority of the year, um, I do think like I'm not worried about Gabe. I'm honestly not. And, and I think AQ said it yesterday to us in our chat, and I totally agree with him. You know, if we're talking worry and where I am personally, wide receiver two versus whoever they're going to use in the slot. I mean, that kind of ties in perfectly, as Chris said, who we're talking about Beasley, Shakir, McKenzie. You know, sometimes it's a matchup related game. If you're playing a lot of man, they're going to put McKenzie in there. Like having to, to do that, you know, play that type of chess with the roster is it's it's tough. I'm more worried about that because that was really Josh Allen's crutch for many years. For many years, Cole Beasley was wide receiver too, not necessarily a boundary receiver. So I think Gabriel Davis's numbers are fine. I think the drops, yes, they're worrisome because you're a receiver. You got to catch the ball. Um, but I also look at it as like, you know what? In the grand scheme of things, if a guy's targeted 93 times, are seven drops, like, horrific? Am I worried that when a big moment arises, especially in the playoffs, Gabe Davis isn't going to make that catch? I mean, Gabe Davis made his career on mm -hmm. big catches. And we're not just talking, even prior to the playoffs last year, he always has made big catches. And the most difficult catches down the field, the low percentage throws and catches. So I'm not worried about Gabriel Davis. I think he's going to bounce back just fine. And when it comes to like his catch mechanics, how he frames the ball, um, how he lets the ball get into his body, there are different ways to catch the ball. There are different schools of thought on how to frame a pass when it's thrown to you. And sometimes a body catch is the catch to use because you're going to get hit and lit up. You want to shield the ball. Sometimes it's not. But yeah, I do think the drops are, are worrisome. But I do think when that moment arises, more times than not, Gabriel Davis has made those catches. Yeah. And can we talk about the low percent? Like we talk about his target to catch ratio and it's sometimes half baked because sure you'd like, he does have those drops baked in there, but can we talk about all of his, not all of them, a majority of his targets are those low probability plays. That's why his catch ratio is lower than others. Like someone in the slot per se, or like a Beasley is what have been. I mean, Josh is trying to make things happen with Gabe Davis. You see it in the playoff. You saw his really shining moments, really, in those indie toe taps in the playoffs in the wild card round yes. a few years Something ago. we haven't seen we haven't. lately. He's been right. missing on the sideline lately. Yeah, he yeah. has been in that one play, I think, even against the Patriots, where even Tony Romo said he's got to take that tap that foot and then drag the other one. Uh, and I agreed with Tony in that, in that sentiment uh, on the sidelines uh, earlier in that game, but... 836 or seven touchdowns, still a 17.4 yards per catch average. I mean, some of those stats to me, like, sure, you can get better at the receiver too, but I think you'll always, it's one of those things where you want what's always, you know, grass is always greener on the other side till it's not. Um, and I think that that's kind of the issue where we're seeing in the slot. Do we want to really exacerbate those problems at wide receiver two and try something new that, you know, I don't know, 807 touchdowns. That's to me pretty close to a pretty solid uh, <laughs> receiver too, in my opinion. Sure, it could be yeah. a tad bit better. And he was hurt right. with the ankle stuff. Yeah. And and the thing with me is um, there's some great comments about this. Roy Collins says, Gabe Davis averages less than three catches uh, per game. Don't you think it should be more than that? Yeah. And, and it kind of ties into what I'm bringing up here. So right now we're looking at PFFs. Um, they, they divide receptions uh, for receivers by depth. And, and deep is 20 yards or more. So let's start there. And as you can see, Gabriel Davis is top five in that regard as far as target percentage uh, down the field. Among receivers with 50% of the targets down the field over 20 yards, he, his target rate is 26.9. You can see 25 targets, nine receptions, four touchdowns, and his, his touchdowns, um, he's always had multiple touchdowns in this area. He's always been usually top three or four in touchdowns on plays over 20 yards. That's really, you know, being wide receiver three, four at times over the last few years where he made his money. The other area is usually in the red zone, and we'll talk about that later. But I want to show that percentage because that target percentage of 26.9, top five in the league, right? But the issue that we have, and some of this is related to the type of player Gabriel Davis is. Some of this is related to the offense. And Ken Dorsey only keeping him on the boundary 91% of the time. 
Now, if we go to, I'm not going to do intermediate area because that's his wheelhouse. He, he's always been that, um, that dude. He's got like six touchdowns in that area. But if we look short, and we're talking wide receiver two. We're talking about the type of player he is and how they're using him. Now, if you look at the target percent, percentage for that, he's near the bottom of the league. Let me go ahead and bring him up. Um, got so I got I to gotta change the minimum targets because he doesn't even get that many targets, just like Roy was talking about. So target percentage. 26.9 dead last in the league. So he has just he's targeted just as often on passes 20 yards or more <laughs> as in the short short area That's 0 funny. to 9 yards. That's really What do you expect easy. from a wide receiver too who's not targeted often in 0 to 9 yards who's only can run only so many routes as a boundary receiver. Again, he's only in the slot a little over 9% of the time. Last year that was like 30 to 31 percent the year before that it was like 35 to 36 percent so how they're using him has a big is a big factor into his his numbers obviously but also you know some of those struggles and some of those targets per game like as a wide receiver too is 93 targets um enough for a wide receiver too and i think it's more on that middle to low end when it comes to wide receiver two talk which is subjective in many ways um but when you have a guy like gabriel davis who is getting as, just as much targets in the short area as deep, it's got to be telling you something. And that's not necessarily all on the player. Yeah, that's, it's definitely interesting. And I like that. I like that Jalen Waddle's the other one there too, by the way. Yeah. No, isn't that, that's funny. Tyree look look, some of, the look, look at some of the names. Another, yeah. Look who's another wide receiver too on that list. <laughs> one of the best in the league, probably. Um, so that's, so th this is a good point too. Uh, I, maybe when you guys talk about that, while I bring up some stats to talk about Josh asks. Is he low on targets because he doesn't separate? And I'll say the quick answer, I think that has something to do with it. I, absolutely. Um, but again, I think usage is also baked into that. For me, yeah. I, I, Eric, I think it's fully tough to know. We don't see a lot of those routes, right? Like, it's right. fully tough to know if that's the issue. It could I mean, be. Think about it. If you're an outside you receiver, 91% yeah. of the time you're outside, you're on right. the boundary. How many different routes can you run from the boundary outside the numbers? That's Not right. many. You're, you know, and if you're not running a lot of the, you're not getting targeted a lot in that zero to nine yards, how many routes does that take away from that route tree? So, uh, you know, you, you heard Patrick Peterson talk about, oh, they're predictable. Gabriel Davis is predictable in his route tree. Well, a lot of that had to do with, again, how they use him um, and, and where his success has been. His success has always, always been on goes, posts, digs, and stop comeback routes, but so more so a little down the field, right? So if you just take a guy now from a, a guy that you're not moving around um, prior years, Dable did, and now you're just putting him on the outside, how much more predictable does that make that player? But more importantly, your offense. Right. That's how much easier true. is he to cover? But also like, that's what was in his scouting report in, in college. That's why he was a fourth round pick. Mm -hmm. Like there was some of that in there. Wasn't it like, wasn't oh, yeah, that no limited of, route tree and right, all that limited route tree drops. Some of but the things has, we're seeing. Yeah, and he has improved in some of those areas. Yeah. But, I mean, it, this year, again, you said it, injuries baked into that. Um, uh, and a lot of people talk about the weight gain and all like that. So, I think, yes, I think there was a, there is a ceiling for him as far as route running. But when it comes to separation, his sep excuse me, his separation, if, if you look at some of the next-gen stats, is it's, it's right on par in prior years. And, he again, he was still producing, and he still is producing. I just think right. those expectations are kind of blurring everyone's vision. Can we go with one final point about Gabriel, just a long-term point? I mean, we we'll say what we want, and we could want a different receiver too or better receiver, whatever. He's going to make $13 million on the open market next year. So someone's paying him for this skill set that we're complaining about. His comps. You mean after 2023? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. So let, this is his final year after the play. Mm -hmm. Obviously, 2023 right. he has. But he's comped right now at $13 million. Um, you know, some of his comps, you know, Christian Kirk is a good one, for instance, based on some of his – ratios receptions per game yards per game reception touchdowns per game yak drop passes etc um gabriel J davis drop ratios 0.3 christian kirk's is 0.26 for instance um so right now he's gonna get paid a team's gonna want this skill set um he's downright really good deep threat receiver and uh, in a league that throws the ball a lot but i like that's him. the thing you know like Everyone talks about um, the yak per reception or the just yak overall with him. It's like, one, he's never really been that type of guy. I mean, why are you expecting that in the first place? Just because Ken Dorsey and the staff said that in the offseason.
But secondly, we talked about where he's targeted. He is targeted deep just as <laughs> often as he's targeted short. Well, when you go deep, unless you're blown by guys like Waddle or Hill, there, there's not much yak after that, all right? Um, so a, a lot of that yak came on, obviously, that big play against Pittsburgh, but that's really always been his forte. Um, so you're not getting those short passes and, and breaking tackles. Like, that's not the kind of guy he is. And if that's what you as a fan expected, and, you know, shame on Bean if that's what he expected. I don't know if that's true or not. I think that's why that he went out and got a guy like Shakir or a guy like Crowder. But um, if that's what you were expecting, if you're looking at yak per reception on Gabriel Davis, why are you doing that? Because that's never been his thing. That's exactly right. It's hard yeah. to make yak when you're a boundary sideline toe taps or you're over the top. Go already. route guy. Yeah. yeah. Especially with Josh Allen. Like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. And everything's a contested catch thing, which this right. year contested catches have haven't gone his way either. Again, it's a down year. Um, his contested catch rate right now is 34.8. Last year it was 76.9. Did all of a sudden Gabriel Davis forget how to catch the ball, especially in contested catch situations, how to run routes like quasi tight ends from the slot? That's how they used him. Like they would use him in those 10 personnel looks in the slot running the same routes that Dawson Knox runs. Like he's got that body and frame and strength. Mm -hmm. Why aren't you using him that way? I just don't get it. Be interesting. Is there some regression back to the mean there for Davis last year or some progression up to where he was coming soon? That was what I would think seem to think of. I think he I think he is who he is. He's a very good wide receiver. Now you can debate whether that's good enough to be a wide receiver too. I think he's put up enough numbers. I think the Bills just miss that third option and a steady, consistent third option who for many years, again, we're talking Cole Beasley in that role in this offense from Brian Dable that he brought here, you know, from Alabama and the Patriots, that slot position's always been the crutch. It's always been the position that the quarterbacks lean on. And Josh hasn't had that consistency from the slot. So I think they're looking for that third option at the wide receiver position. Obviously Knox, it plays into that, but I'm talking in the slot. Like it's been the entire offense has been based around that. Yeah, certainly have been a struggle this year to whether it, they're trying McKenzie there. They're trying Shakir there. Obviously, Crowder got injured. Uh, but, you know, we brought Beasley back in. We're still missing that. Uh, and that's, a, like you said, a major part. Now, I wonder, do you think from a team building perspective, if you're looking out past, you know, next year, um, is Gabriel Davis something that someone that you're looking at as a priority resign or, you know, is it more important to say bring Ed Oliver back um, when wide receivers may be a little bit easier to replace in, uh, in terms of draft picks? Okay. Kev, you can lead with that one. Um, I think it's, I think you're going to lead this year with draft picks right now. I think you're going to go into the off season at some point here, hopefully in February, and you're going to lean into receiver and you're going to probably draft someone here and control it that we just talked about he's going to cost 13 14 million yeah um that's tough you know yeah. I, that's tough with tremaine add a couple other guys um i don't personally then probably you know probably have to do something at safety uh i just don't know where their money's gonna there's gonna draft mm -hmm. to answer your question they're gonna draft someone this year i think i'm feeling pretty confident of it um or do they just feel so strongly about the slot, a really solid slot receiver that they do whatever they can to get one? I don't know, Jacoby Myers, et cetera. I, it's it's going to be interesting to see how they handle it. But, Chris, I think that they draft someone this year to put them in the system for when Gabe leaves next year. Yeah, I agree. I, I think, you know, we're going down the senior bowl here in a couple of weeks, and wide receiver is where I started my, my uh, scouting uh, along with offensive line. So I do think that, you do draft someone doesn't even have to be high unless, you know, someone does stick out. Um, I, I do think you, you go ahead and try to pick up a receiver. Cause as we know, this system is not the easiest thing to learn. We've heard multiple vets say that it's going to take time. And we know for the most part, when it comes to some of these, you know, mid round draft picks, they're not going to be inserted right away. So, um, and there's a lot, there's a standard. Let's, let's say it. there's a standard now with Josh Allen at quarterback, there's a standard with a guy like Stefan Diggs in the room. So rookies are going to be brought along slowly. And that's why, you know, again, go get, go get a guy, um, whether it's in the draft or um, in, in free agency or whatnot. But uh, I just don't expect that young, that a young guy to come in and just make right. a difference unless that's a super high pick. And, but even then they're going to make him earn it. Um, so um, I, I don't think investing a, a contract 
with, with Gabriel Davis? No, I, I don't. I don't think you discuss any of that personally until that contract runs out, his rookie contract runs out. And as Kevin said, more, more than likely that number is going to phase him out. Um, and the bills are going to look to the draft either way when that comes. So why not look now? So when it does, when that page is turned, you have a guy that's been in the system for a, a year or two and, and now you have a guy that can step in. So 